Coming up, the top 10 tips for beating a car dealer. How you can fight back and organise a much better deal. Buying a car is not fun. Everyone on the other team is match fit and systematically incentivised to rip you off if you let them. But it doesn't have to be this way. Here's how to recognise the tricks and sidestep the traps. Car dealers are under pressure at the end of the month, every month. That's when they need to report back to the car companies. If they sell their quotas, there's a huge bonus. If not, they're out in the cold for the next 28 days. So the only time for serious negotiation is the end of the month. If you pitch a low offer at a dealer who's short of his quota, you might be surprised just how enthusiastically he embraces it. Timing is everything. Always shop at the end of the month and pitch your offer well below the driveaway price. Dealers actually own all the cars on the showroom floor and plenty you can't see in holding yards out the back. They're bought on credit and the interest on that credit is substantial. So the dealer is highly motivated to sell any car in stock now. Zero in on one of those. That's where all the real discounting happens. There's no such thing as an insultingly low offer because you can always come up. The car in stock now might not be exactly the car you want. You can use that to your advantage. If it's automatic and you want the manual, tell the dealer he needs to make it worthwhile. You could say that even if you secretly did want the auto. It's an option. If it's silver, say you wanted red, dealers will discount cars in stock. But if they have to order one in, the potential for discounts just evaporates. Part of the trick is actually finding a dealer with exactly the car you want in stock now and then tell him you wanted a slightly different car and talk the price down. If there's a waiting list, you can forget about any discount. Buyers are queuing up. Supply and demand says there's no reason to offer any discount. You can wait a few months until the next big thing comes along and demand follows suit, or you can just buy another similar car. Or you can buy now and pay through the neck. But when demand exceeds supply, there's basically no discount for anyone. Even without thinking about it, you might find yourself conducting three transactions at a dealership. You'll buy a new car, but you might also trade in your old one and arrange finance. Dealers make it so easy to do this. But if that's what you do, you're giving the dealer breathtaking leverage and he will use it. It's at least two additional ways to rip you off. They can leverage the new car against the finance and also leverage the trade-in against the new car. They can give you a great price on the new car and bend you right over on the trade-in and the finance. So only buy the new car from the dealer. Sell your old car separately and arrange the finance independently. If you separate those three transactions, you block the major opportunities the dealer has to rip you off. And it'll be much easier to identify any remaining rip-offs within that single car buying transaction. Always get the dealer to tell you the all-up drive-away price. Get him to go first, then you take off 10 to 20% and counter-offer with a nice round number. If the dealer says 34,990 drive-away, you say, I can't spend more than 30 grand, but I am prepared to do business with you now at that price. If he says 29,490, you say, can't spend more than 25. If he says 41,990, you say, didn't want to spend more than 35, I can probably stretch up to 36. It's not that hard to negotiate. Don't be intimidated talking about money. The dealer certainly isn't. At this point, the price is the only impediment. So here's how to stick to your spending limit. You've got to make your spending limit somebody else's responsibility. And it has to be someone who's not there. If you're a bloke, you say, mate, if I spend more than 25 grand today, my missus will kill me. If you're a chick, lay it all off on the boyfriend. It's his problem. It doesn't really matter who holds the limit. They don't have to exist. <laughs> 
but try not to make it the Easter Bunny. It only matters that this person is not actually present. The absent third party is essential. So you and the dealer, you're on the same page. You want to buy the car, he wants you to buy it. So that's nice. You're in it together. The only speed hump is the absent third person's limit. They're not present, so the dealer can't go to work on them. Hmm, what a pity. Because you'd love to spend four grand more, right? But if you do, permafrost back on the domestic front. And nobody wants that. So he says 34,990. You say 30 grand because someone who's not there is going to dismember you and feed you to the rats, possibly in the other order if you overspend. The dealer says, no way. You go, okay, no problem. I'll just keep shopping around. Thanks for your time. You shake hands and then walk away. If the dealer lets you go, he's just not that motivated. Alternatively, if those bonuses are in fact riding on your sale and that car is in stock now, you might be amazed just how flexible the price suddenly becomes. Walking away puts you in a very powerful negotiating position. You could fill Wikipedia with the top lies and half-truths used to sell cars. Dealers need you to transact now before you walk out the door and change your mind or spend your money elsewhere. They'll say anything for a signature and a deposit. That's the game. Any alleged special price for today only is a lie. The other customer who's rushing back in with a deposit, that's a lie. Big price rises tomorrow, that's a lie. Trade-in that's $8,000 lower than you thought, that's a lie too. And why are you even discussing that? You need to separate the transactions. Assertions about in-house finance being great are lies. That's actually a half-truth. In-house finance is great for the dealer. But basically, if you took away all the lies used to get you across the line, dealerships would be big, fat, chrome, glass, cones of silence. The only safe assumption is, assume it's all BS. Don't play the game. It's better to be the organ grinder than the monkey here. Time for the golden rules. If you've got the cash, how about you make the rules? Dealers generate very healthy cash flow by selling you a stack of things you don't need at extortionate prices. Paint protection is a joke. So is rust proofing and fabric protection. You just have to say no. The in-house insurance is also a rip-off. It'll be rebranded insurance from a major insurer, marked up by something like 100%. The in-house finance, you'll always do better independently. 0% finance, that's a complete rip-off too. Dealer delivery charge, that's like two grand for washing the car, filling the tank, screwing on the plates, and making sure there's oil and water in the respective reservoirs. I'd be negotiating that down to well under a thousand bucks. Meeting the sales manager, this is a classic too. It's not an opportunity to get the price down. It's a double team effort to get a deposit and a signature out of you right now. Twice the coercion, half the fun. Just don't meet the sales manager, it's not necessary. Being subjected to all these incremental insidious vectors along which dealers try to dock their vacuum cleaner with your bank account is certainly an endurance event. They want to try and wear you down. And in the moment, you might just say yes, just to make the pain go away. But remember, you need to say one word, no. There's only one way to tell if you're getting the right price. If you're buying a TV, you can always shop Bing Lee against Kogan, the good guys, Meyer and David Jones. It's easy. But if you're buying a car, you need a car broker. What you do is you negotiate a price at the dealership, but don't pay a deposit or sign a contract. Then see what a car broker can do. Brokers buy cars all day long. Their business model is delivering a saving to you. They use bulk buying power and their knowledge of the retail market to get the price down. They're surprisingly good at it, and they work for you. Once the broker gets the price, you can transparently compare the price you've been able to negotiate independently with the price you've just been offered by the broker. It's the only way to make sure you're getting the best possible price. Let's focus for a sec on the car you want. It might not look like a commodity, but that's exactly what it is. There's no qualitative difference between the car you want at dealership A and the same car at dealership B. 
They came out of the same factory. Their mothers can't tell them apart. The dealership doesn't change them in any way or add intrinsic value. The dealership is actually just a very fancy vending machine. When you're buying a commodity, the only factor that matters is the price. Lowest price wins. That's what a broker delivers nine times out of 10. So fill in the contact form over there on the right at autoexpert.com.au. I'll put you in touch with an ethical car broker who can see just how low the price on your new car really goes. The broker can also put your trade in out to tender if you lack the time or the inclination to sell your old car privately. Buying a car is not an uplifting experience. It should be, but it's not. It's challenging, stressful, and generally fairly unpleasant. But it doesn't have to be a rip-off. You can drive away without being absolutely, systematically violated. <laughs> Especially now. I'm John Cadogan, and that was pretty much everything car dealers don't want you to know. Thanks for watching.